let's compare all of Apple Silicon with the M1, the M1 Pro, and the M1 Max in this ultimate benchmarking comparison. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And what I have in front of me are three machines, all running Apple Silicon. And I'm going to benchmark all of them for you so you can see the performance differences between all of Apple's processors. The M1 in our 13 inch MacBook Pro, the M1 Pro in our 14 inch MacBook Pro, and the M1 Max in our 16 inch MacBook Pro. But let's dive a little bit deeper on the specs first, then get into the benchmarking. Starting off with the little guy here at the left. This is our M1 MacBook Pro. It's an eight core CPU and we have eight gigs of RAM and eight core GPU as well. Now, if we go up a step, this is our M1 Pro and it is a 14 inch MacBook Pro with a 10 core CPU as well as 16 gigs of RAM and a 16 core GPU. Then lastly is the M1 Max, which again, same 10 core CPU, but it has a 32 core GPU and it has 32 gigs of RAM inside. But what are the big differences between the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, aside from the benchmarking that we're gonna get to? The M1 Pro caps at that 16 core GPU, while the M1 Max can go up to the 32 core GPU. There's also twice the memory bandwidth in the M1 Max. It has 400 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth versus only 200. And there's more memory supported. The M1 Max can go up to 64 gigs of RAM, while the M1 Pro can only do 32 gigs of RAM. Both of these guys have a 16 core neural engine. The M1 Pro has a single ProRes encoder and decoder and a single video encoder, while the M1 Max has two video encoders and two ProRes encoder and decoders. So video performance is going to be much better on the M1 Max, especially if you're using Apple ProRes. Just to reiterate again, the M1 in our 13 inch MacBook Pro, the M1 Pro in the 14 inch MacBook Pro, and the M1 Max in our 16 inch MacBook Pro. Looking at Geekbench 5, our M1 Max scored a 1769 and a 12308. Our M1 Pro scored a comparable 1760 and 12437. That is not surprising because they are very similar processors here. They, even though this is the M1 Max and the M1 Pro, they're both 10 core CPUs with similar clock speeds. So in terms of a Geekbench score, they should be pretty much the same thing. Then we move on to the M1, which it scored a 1752. The single score should be very similar to the other two processors because it does run at a similar clock speed for an individual single core, but it's only an eight core system. So a 7,000 here for the multi-core makes sense and we're seeing faster ones on the multi-core because we have additional cores. For our second CPU test, we're gonna to turn to Cinebench. And as you can see, we scored a just over 12,000 for both the new M1 Pro and M1 Max and only a 7,793 on our M1. This all again makes sense for that multi-core because we're running similar clock speeds all across the board. So that does make sense. But it gets interesting when we turn to the GPU. In the compute benchmarks, our M1 scored a 21,425. Our M1 Pro pulled a 40,991, pretty much double what the M1 did. And then our M1 Pro, or M1 Max here at the end managed a 68,950 almost 70,000 on that metal score versus a 41 and a 21.5. So huge performance different when it comes to graphics from the M1 to the M1 Pro to the M1 Max. Furthermore, if we go to our affinity benchmark, we have another big jump, especially when we look at our raster score, we're looking at 8,555 on our M1. We're looking at 16,839 on our M1 Pro and a gigantic, 32 and 028 on our M1 Max. So a huge jump in our graphic scores in the Affinity benchmark. That all brings us to Final Cut Pro. Let's go ahead and run our video export test on all three of these machines. What we're going to be exporting is a 1.12 gigabyte 4K video file. We're gonna be exporting this. It's about seven and a half minutes long. 
We're gonna export it from all three machines and see how long it takes. Unsurprisingly, the M1 Max killed it here. The M1 processor took almost four minutes. It took three minutes and 53 seconds to finish the task, while the M1 Pro came in slightly faster at three minutes and 35 seconds. That M1 Max though completely crushed it, coming in at just over two minutes at two minutes and four seconds. That is over a minute and a half faster than the M1 Pro and nearly twice as fast as that M1 processor. Now let's do a similar test but this time we're gonna use some ProRes video that we captured on our iPhone 13 Pro. This ProRes video test export is about a three minute video. It's shot at 4K and rendering using Apple ProRes 422. Using ProRes, our six inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max took 51 seconds to export that 4K ProRes video. Our M1 Pro took a minute and 30 seconds and then our M1 took a minute and 40 seconds to accomplish. Definitely the M1 Max showing its strength, doing it in like half the time as the other two laptops did. Those performance games coupled with that additional bandwidth for the unified memory on that M1 Max, you can see the difference starting from the M1 to the M1 Pro to the M1 Max. If you wanna grab any of Apple's latest Macs, we are compiling the best deals and I've got links for you down in the description. Let me know which model you are picking up on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. I'll catch you guys in the next video.